Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Let me hit, there we go. Right, get it on the right screen. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I've been watching the news over the last couple of days, and um, I have to finally say, I think feminism, I used to joke around feminism was the greatest thing that ever happened to men uh, because it allowed men to not have to worry about being providers and and husbands, and we're not shamed for staying single and spending our money on whatever we want, doing our own thing, and now it's okay to hire professionals and uh, because, you know, a, a spicy work is real work and et cetera, et cetera. But now we're getting to the point where feminists aren't even supporting women anymore. They're supporting other causes, and they're throwing society, men, women, minorities under the bus for the new the newest latest wokeism trend which is the lghd tv community specifically focusing on the t uh portion of it yeah so i, I got us some stories that i want to go over today before we jump into that though i do have a a fun story about talking with my general contractor who's helping me uh so i'm, I'm having a cabin built um, I don't have enough hardwoods. I've got a lot of pine and other things on the land that I've purchased, so I don't have enough hardwoods to actually cut down and use as a home. So I talked to a log cabin company, and they're going to be helping me build a log cabin home. And I'm talking to a general contractor about digging the well, uh, putting in the driveway, and running electricity to the to the line and uh, the property, and you know, doing the 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 things that I don't know how to do, um, or at least getting the, the the permits and everything like that for it. And the, the, there's actually a woman that uh, she's been doing it for 20, 25 years. She's a very, a very uh, uh, intelligent and well-spoken woman. And what I found funny about it is that the other day we were kind of walking the property and we were talking about where I want to cut in my electricity lines and where I want the house to sit before they clear the land. And uh, we got on the topic of society currently and how crazy it's gone and just how weird it's getting. And the ones leading that charge are the feminist types. But what they've done instead is they've taken this new in intersectionality and running, running with it a, even further. So I'll jump right into it. But I found it, it was interesting that now women are like, they're not, they don't care about us women anymore. That they're now moving into this far wokeism stuff. And now women are even being left on the back burner. And I'm kind of like, yeah. you know. And she's not the type that would have ever... Uh, been in for this kind of thing. She's married with kids and uh, a very conservative woman, so she's not quite in on that stuff. So the reason why I picked the, this thumbnail for today, Modern Feminism is Destroying World Societies. This is Megan Rapinoe, as you know, uh, one of the most uh, unattractive people inside and out. And then, of course, this is a Victoria's Secret angel. And the two couldn't be more diametrically opposed. I'm not doing a, a story on this for very long, but I, I wanted to start with this because I saw this in the news the other day, Victoria's Secret cuts 160 management roles in reorganization. And uh, I said, oh, they're, they're reorganizing. I, I guess maybe business isn't going so well. Um, and I, apparently the stock has fallen off uh, quite a bit about uh, over the last six months. And I, I kind of went back a little bit and said, hey, why is it falling off a cliff? And they, Because they scrubbed the angels from its stores in a revamp exactly one year ago. And that's right when the stock started falling off. I don't know if that's in the original story here, but they started uh, uh, somewhere in here. They said that uh, uh, right here, through uh, through Thursday's close, Victoria's Secret shares have tumbled 34% since the start of trading in July 2021. And I said, okay, that's kind of a weird timing, exactly a year. What happened July 2021? And here it is right here. They scrubbed the angels from its stores in a revamp, and they started putting up pictures of big, bold, and beautiful women. BBWs, and they took away the angels. And at the same time, uh, let's see if they uh, load up this page. There we go. It, and this is from June 2021. So again, a year ago, they officially ends its angel era for brand overhaul led by uh, Priyanka uh, Chopra and Megan Rapinoe. They went woke and they decided, they say right here, a newly announced group of celebrity activists that will rally around important causes and create products for the lingerie label. So they basically said, hey, doesn't matter what you look like or, or you know, big, bold, beautiful, whatever, doesn't matter. Also, it's not about underwear anymore. It's about uh, a message, a global message. And you can see women, because, I mean, men do not wander into a Victoria's Secret shop uh, to buy something unless it's for their woman. 
Uh, you can see, and, and I, that doesn't happen very often. Trust me. I've had I've I've had a um, I've had a a talk with enough men to say this is not something that we actually do on our own. It's usually at the direction of women. So women are saying no to this craziness now, which I think is funny, but it's actually having a real impact on on men now. Society has decided, you know what? It's about messaging. It's about um, uh, this kind of leftist agenda, and it's no longer even about women, which is what I find so fascinating. They're willing to throw women under the bus now as long as it's part of the H LGHD TV community and it, and it supports their agenda. And this was posted on, uh, on, on Twitter today, and this is from uh, Reddit on 2X chromosomes. And, and this is the kind of stuff when you guys don't get matches on <clears throat> dating, app, uh, dating apps, and when you don't get the job that you wanted, there's a reason why. And it doesn't mean that you're not qualified. It doesn't mean that you're not a worthy human being. It's, it's because there is now a branding and a message behind it. And companies may not come out right out and say it, but their employees are. You know, HR resources and uh, a lot of them are filled with very, uh, very blue-haired, overweight women. And uh, because, again, it gives them power and it gives them control over people, which is what they ultimately want. Uh, this is from 2H chrom uh, 2X Chromosomes. I work in HR in a red state, meaning conservative. Ever since uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned, I've been throwing out all job applications from white men. Uh, she says, and again, I'm not, I don't sit on the court. As a matter of fact, uh, Judge Clarence Thomas, a black man, uh, is the one that led the charge on this uh, ruling. And of course, it, all it does is it gives people the right to vote about it. If you don't like the way it is in your state, vote for a different politician that'll enact different laws in your state, but we can't have that. So she says, I was so devastated when the illegitimate Supreme Court made us second-class citizens by giving you the ability to choose whether you know you want to live in an area where it's it's legal or not. So I'm doing all my power to fight back. White men wanted this. Now, on the court, just so you know, there is a white female, a black female, and a black male out of seven of them, nine of them, <laughs> out of nine of them. So, you know, if you look at representation as far as, and, and I, I'm not sure the, the other dynamics I get, but the whole point is that, and last I checked, I'm not sitting on the Supreme Court, but there is diversity on our Supreme Court, whether you agree with it or not. Uh, they, they voted for Trump. Okay. Um, I guarantee you probably half of the, at least half, uh, did not, um, which led to this outcome. They knew what they were voting for once they are unemployable and shunned from our society. So apparently we're going to, you know, 70% of the population is Caucasian. Half of that is men. So you're going to try to shun 35% of the population. Good luck with you, to you. Uh, once they're shunned from society, maybe they will realize how wrong their actions are. I don't feel bad. Not getting a job is nowhere near as bad as forcing someone to give birth. I, yes, it's crazy. It's crazy to force someone to actually give birth to a child they created. I know, it's, it's crazy. Or you could just not get pregnant in the first place because they have like 18 different types of contraceptions. And somebody down below says, normally I would be against this, but we are past the point of civility. We need to do everything in our power to get our rights back, everything. People going, not all men can kick rocks. So obviously conservative women are saying, no, not all men, um, they marry us, or, or at least if, if we get in the motherly way, those men stick around. Maybe not all conservatives, but I mean, it is more general than the other. Um, and a lot of women, you know, appreciate men like that. And a lot of men, uh, myself included, would be the type that, hey, you know, if I get someone in the motherly way, I'm going to step up, I'm going to be dad, I'm going to be involved in this, and I'd like the kid to be you know, kept around for a while. But you notice that these these are women, and now they're they're pushing back and they're pushing back against race and male and conservatism and like it's it's growing to this their their size isn't growing but their dislike of what they they call part of the patriarchy and part of um, what feminism is against is growing what what they dislike is growing and that's something to be aware of. And the reason why this is important is because, again, if you go out to try to get a job and you say, I can't get a job, is it me or is it something, it could be something going on at these companies. You might be 
perfectly well suited for the job. And this is from Off My Chest, which is another section on Reddit, and this says true off my chest. And this is a guy, he said, I sent 100 applications as a man, and as a woman, it's much better being a woman. He said, so I did an experiment. I work in CS and decided to test what gender bias is. So I took my, uh, my, my CV, my cover letter, and changed the name to a female name. I sent it out with my real name, and then a few days later or a few days before with a female name. So same, same application, just changed the name on it. Out of, 100, out, of, out of 100, my applications with a male name got seven responses for an interview. Out of 100 of my applicants with a female name got 45 responses to an interview. The female resume was <clears throat> 650% more likely to get a callback, and the resumes were identical. And again, this is part of what's going on with this new feminism. They wanted us, they, they claimed that they wanted equality. Now what they're basically saying, and, and it's kind of gotten into the zeitgeist of HR managers and recruiters and hiring managers and everybody else, is no, we don't want to be equal. We want to punish men for all the sins of, of, of history. We're going to punish men of today, even though they had nothing to do with it. And I, and I, I want to talk about this stuff specifically so that you guys know that if you're not getting those job applications, if something's going on and you're not having any luck, it, it may very well likely have nothing to do with you on a personal basis or even your job qualifications. It boils down to the fact that you're a man and you, you may not fit the demographics they want. And, and the weird thing about this, and this is what I, I can't get over, is I'm seeing more and more that it's just men in general. At one point in time, uh, it used to be, you know, white men bad, minorities and people of color good. Then it went, well, men bad, women of, of you know, minorities and people of color, etc. Now it's literally getting to the point where if you're conservative or even if you're liberal and you're kind of not into the woke new leftism agenda, you are bad. Doesn't matter how you fall or what race you are or if you're a man or a woman or whatever. You're just bad. You're just out. And the reason I know this, again, and I've talked about this in other videos, is because Larry Elder, a black conservative man who's on radio out in L.A., L.A. called him the new, the new black face of white supremacy. Okay? And then a minority, a, a Latina woman who was born native to Mexico that came to Texas to America as a legal immigrant, she just got uh, uh, elected by uh, the, the Republican Party down in, in Texas, and it was a Democrat seat since like the 1800s. She got elected in, and now they're attacking her, saying that she's adopted with white man thinking. It takes away all agency. If you don't agree with us, we don't care what, if you're a woman, we don't care if you're a man, we don't care if you're a minority, we don't care the, the, the white mind power has invaded how you think and, and now we're against you. And this is the, the new feminism is the new woke. Um, and, and he finishes off here. So, uh, so then I thought, what about someone looking for working job or working class jobs? So I des decided to focus on restaurants, servers, hosting, etc. Let me pause you right there, champ. That's not a working class job. I mean, it is, but it's not. Working class job. Uh, a true uh, blue collar job is wrenching, mechanics, electrical, um, uh, plumbing, engineering, HVAC, whatever. Uh, if you apply for those as a man, I, I assume that you're going to have much better luck because there aren't many women and not many women will last crawling up on a roof to do roofing with 17 other dudes out in, you know, 98 degree heat, especially in Florida. So he says, uh, I made a fake resume and responded to Craigslist ads with both male and female names. Same, uh, sometimes the male went first, sometimes the female went first. Out of 100, my applications with a male name got 10 responses for interview, or about 10%. Uh, out of 100 applications with female name got 87 responses to my interview, 87%. He says uh, female uh, resume got 870% more responses. So again, it's, it's boiling down to it. it. It's less about equality. It's more about, uh, it's now moving to left versus right. Are you indoctrinated or not? And if you're not, you're out. And this is happening through a bunch, a bunch of different uh, countries. 
and and it's it's putting preferential treatment and special attention to your skin color, your uh, your proclivity in the bedroom, whether you identify as guy, gal, uh, LGHD TV. If if you believe in because here's the thing: if you sent in your name and you were getting an interview, and I don't, I, I I'm quite sure even if you were say a black female, I'm quite sure if you said, oh, I'm very conservative. I believe in, you know, Bible and God and, and, and conserving the family home and, and, oh yeah, I'm a Republican all, all the way. You're out. You're out. And, and so feminism has now really become a political movement versus something to make women have equality. And again, all you have to do is uh, read in the news about anything, about, uh, um, what's her name? Uh, Candace Owens, who is a conservative uh, uh, woman. A, black, a conservative black woman. They do not care. They do not care. And I'm going to let you hear kind of how crazy this has gone. And I'm not going to try to spend too much time on this, but I want you guys to hear this because it is invading the roots of our society. And over the last few days, um, over the last month, I've, I've really struggled because I'm like, well, every time I want to talk about women behaving badly or these laws or everything else, I start getting into politics. And I, I, could, I can't figure out, like, why? why? I, I'm really not that interested in politics. I mean, politicians, they all hate you. Yes, there are some. There's a sprinkling of some uh, that are trying to do their best for society and, and for the country or whatever country you're in. But in general, politicians do not care about you. I don't care what side of the fence they're on. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. They don't care about you. But every time I went to, to talk about feminism or, or these women doing these bad things, I keep slipping right into politics. And I said, why is this, why is this happening? And I, I kind of took some time to think about it. And what I realized is that now the, the women and what they want and what they vote and what they control, and it's becoming so progressive that they've become political. And so when I want to talk about these topics, I keep slipping into politics. And, and that's what's happening. Um, I, 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 I have this uh, from, this is a, a Cara Bridges. She's a UC Berkeley law professor, pro, a professor. And she's sitting in front of Congress. I think this is Congress. I don't think it's the Senate. I don't recall. And she's giving testimony about, um, uh, about baby deletion and, and how long of, and, and keeping terms and who has rights. And this used to be an issue uh, when we talked about it, when it was like they used to say no uterus, no opinion. And, and, but now that men can be women and women can be men and men can get pregnant and everything else, um, you can see the politics come into it. And, and I, I wanted to show that for that specific reason, that this is a professor now at a very expensive college. And Berke, UC Berkeley, a lot of people don't know this, but back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they were one of the front charging universities about free speech, about freedom, about um, liberty. And they have fallen so far, just like the rest of the academic arena has, into this weird, twisted, uh, leftist cult. So, so let, me, let me play this and you'll hear, you'll hear what I'm, I'm talking about. But listen to the attitude of a professor who has been called in front of Congress to testify on thoughts on things. Listen to the attitude the entitlement, the narcissism, and the just the sheer angst in her voice, because I, I think that is quite. It's that's what drove me to these these videos. And do you think a do you think a, a baby that is delivered alive has value? Yes. Do you think? Let me just pause it. Do you notice how long she has to pause before answering that? Do you think a human, now again, I don't care where you are on whether, you know, this type of thing should be legal or illegal or whatever time frame. All she's asked is, does a baby, a human baby that is alive and out of the mother on its own, does it have any value? She had to think about this. Do human beings have value? Yes. Do you think that a, um, a baby that is not yet born has value? I believe that a person... Okay, let me pause here real quick. I want you to watch her eyes 
She's not looking at him directly. She's not answering. Because if you ask me a question and I'm talking to you, we're going to look at each other like this. And I say, blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking you in the eye. Her eyes roll up and to the right. And she's literally re regurgitating something that she has memorized. This is the, the quote, proper response that is given to these type of questions. And it's, but she literally just flips and, and goes right into script mode. Remember, this is a professor at a university, which is why I say, don't waste your money at many of these universities. Has value? I believe that a person with a capacity for pregnancy has value. They have intelligence. They have agency. They no, have I'm dignity. talking about the baby. And I'm talking about the person with the capacity for and pregnancy. And you're not answering the question. I'm asking. I'm, you I'm, think answer, that a, I'm answering you, a more interesting you think question that, to you me. You think that. <laughs> I'm a, you're not answering my question. I'm answering a more interesting question to me. I don't feel like answering your question. I'm going to tell you the script. I'm going to tell you the, our message. And I will repeat it, and I will not answer what you ask me. I'm going to repeat the message, as Critical Drinker likes to say. I need an echo button. The message. And, and, and this, this is modern feminism. This is where they are going. It is you are now part of the leftist ideology or you're out you're not you're you don't count as a woman as a minority as a person as a man as anything unless you're in now this small tight group of people to the left i'll let her finish her not answering the question i'm asking i'm, you I'm, think answer, that a, I'm answering you, a more interesting you think question that, to you me. think that the baby that is not yet born let's say the day before this mother delivers do you think that baby has value I think that the person with the capacity for pregnancy has value and they have the, they should have the ability to control what happens to their lives. Well, Men. and do you think the person that has the ability, so women are out, women apparently are not the ones that give birth anymore. It is the person that has capacity. It is the womb holder. It is the birthing person. Uh, Professor Bridges, you said um, several times. And, and uh, I want to play this Professor one. And, Bridges, and then you said oh, several stop. Times. Freeze. Thank you. Uh, I want to play this last one again because it's it's one more uh, testimony, and then I'm I'm going to talk about um, why words can't hurt you, but how they say that it does. And and I wanted to talk about this. Actually, let me talk about this before we get into this video, this last video clip here. You know, a lot of times I'll, I'll hear guys say, uh, "She said this to me, and it was devastating," and and that's happened to me many many times in my life. Only now, as I've aged into my forties. Have I figured out why words could hurt? Why words hurt me? Why? And even though I would rationalize in my head that I don't know these people and they don't matter to me, when they would say that I, I'm an ism or an ist or a phobe or, or any of the, you know, you're these bad words, or they'd say, you know, I just don't like you very much. Even though I told myself that they don't matter to me, they did. Their opinions mattered to me. I wanted to be seen as a good person. I wanted to be seen as a giving person and a kind person and a loving person because I feel that I am. And so I wanted to, I wanted people to know that about me. But then I started thinking, well, why is it important that people know that I'm a nice guy and a good guy and a decent guy and all the other tropes that are out there? Why is that so important to me? And it kind of boiled down to wanting to be seen as a good person, which means validation. Because I wanted the validation of people that when they thought about me or when they, they uh, encountered me, they had a good feeling, that I, that I left them with a, good, um, with a good feeling. And then they'd say, boy, you know, that joker, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. I like him. And that was important to me. Once I let go of truly worrying about what people thought of me and worrying about that validation, when I realized that if I walked away from a group of strangers or even very casual friends and they went, wow, that dude is a dick. Once I realized, does that really affect my life or could I just walk away from people like that and not care? Do I really need that validation? Do I really need to be thought of as this good person? As soon as I let that go, the words and things people called me no longer mattered, whether it was good or bad. So if somebody says, oh man, you're an absolute great person and I think you're awesome. 
That's nice to hear. And I'm, I'm glad I'm having that impact on people. It doesn't change my view of the world. It doesn't change who I am as a person. It's nice to hear. I will, I will say that much. But, it, but it's, I'm not going to move in that direction to try to get more validation. Just as in the same way, if somebody says, you know what, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't like your views on things. I think you're, you're whatever, stupid, irrelevant, whatever. Um, that does not make me change what I'm doing to be more likable. I'm still going to stick on my path and doing my thing. And the reason why that's important to you is because if you find that words hurt you, if you find things still bother you, it's you have to ask yourself, not only why does their opinion about me matter, but what does their opinion of me mean to me? Like, in, in other words, like why, why am I worried about why they see me as a good or bad person? Why should I care what anybody thinks about me? And if you can get to the root cause of that and figure out why, what makes you feel like it's important that people like me, why do you need that validation? And we all like validation, but when we need it or when we need it to feel like I'm, I'm good, that's where you start getting into some problems. The, the love for oneself and the feeling that I'm a good person and I'm doing what's right and I feel like I have a good angle on the world, that's got to come from within and that's where people with strong convictions will succeed in these upcoming crazy times. When people say, you're not part of the, the woke or you make fun of the LGHD TV by calling it that acronym or whatever, I don't care. And it's not that I don't, it's not that I don't necessarily care about people's opinions of me, because but I, but I don't. But it's that none of that has an effect on how I think or see the world the way I think and see the world, which is what I'm saying is the way you should think, think and see the world is all from within. If you are, are doing what you think is right, you need to speak up for it and stand up for it and, and be proud of it. And this community, the, the kind of the lefty wacko wackadoos that are destroying society, the reason why this small, probably 10 percentage of people have gained such a foothold in society and in the news and in, in, in changing our culture is because without reservation, they fully believe in what they're saying. They fully believe that they are right and they will stop at no point in time until everybody else's opinions and ways are absolutely decimated. You will be indoctrinated, you will be brought into the cult, or you will be excised. You'll be exiled and tossed right out. If you have opinions and thoughts and beliefs that are the exact opposite of it, you need to be just as loud and proud about it. You need to speak up. And if you think, hey, you know what? I'm not on board with this. You guys can go kick rocks. You can stuff it. There's, there's no more time to be quiet about it. You need to stand up and speak. And the reason why you can stand up and speak is because you're courageous. You do not fear the words that are going to come back at you. You do not fear the repercussions of losing your job or losing some income. It's why Hollywood has drifted so far left because over there, everybody's afraid to speak out if they feel any differently than anybody else. So just remember that and remember that they're going, the, the, we're now in a culture war. F feminism has kind of expanded to where it's also become this big left-wing political movement. And we're now in a culture war and you need to stand up for what you feel is right. So just remember that. But if you're uncomfortable to stand up and feel what, for what's right, they're going to say that your words harm them. They're going to say that you're evil or you're the, all the isms or the phobes. And you just need to realize that those words cannot hurt you because you're not that person. You don't need to defend yourself that you're not that person. Because if we really get down to it uh, and we start pulling numbers and statistics and articles and news and everything else. It's the, the left are the ones that really define everybody based on their race, their, their gender, their ideology and everything else. And, and they're, they're in the wrong. And that's, but, but they're going to call conservatives or liberals that don't see their way. They're going to call them all the, all the names. And if you're going to kind of dip your toe into the culture war, like I, I have, I've jumped on Twitter. If you're going to, uh, if you're going to jump into the culture war and talk about this stuff, understand you're going to get called a lot of awful things. And you better be ready for it. And, and if you're going to bow under that pressure, don't bother putting your, you might as well just sit this one out. 
you're not going to help anybody. All right, uh, we'll keep we'll keep on with this uh, with this woman again. Listen to the tone, the attitude, and that if if you don't agree with them, you're you're now harmful. You're now harming people with your simple words. Now, Professor Bridges, you said several times you've used a phrase. I want to make sure I understand what you mean by it. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. It, would that be women? Many women, cis women, have the capacity for pregnancy. Many cis women do not have the capacity for pregnancy. Um, there are also trans men who are capable of pregnancy, as well as non-binary people who are capable of pregnancy. Let me just mention, too, this, this prof, quote, professor at UC Berkeley has, like, three nose rings. And she, and, her, and, and she also keeps doing the crazy eyes. I forgot to mention this ahead of time. Watch when her eyes go really big, and she, she, gets, she gets the crazy eyes. Now, I do like Tom Cotton. One of the things Tom Cotton uh, is doing here is playing stupid. He knows very well what she's saying and, and all that stuff, but he's doing this for the video clip so he can put it out and, and make them look uh, crazy. I'll start this again, and then I, w I won't stop it again through this part. Now, Professor Bridges, you said several times, you've used a phrase, I want to make sure I understand what you mean by it. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. It, would that be women? Many women, cis women, have the capacity for pregnancy. Many cis women do not have the capacity for pregnancy. Um, there are also trans men who are capable of pregnancy, as well as non-binary people who are capable of pregnancy. So this isn't really a women's rights issue. It's a, it's, we can it's recognize a that this impacts women while also recognizing that it impacts other groups. Those things are not mutually exclusive, Senator Hawley. Oh, so you women are out. Women, you're no longer special. This, is, you're not, this fight is no longer about you. You were useful. Minorities, you're useful to further our agenda. Bravo, Lima, Mike, BLM. Women, you, you were helpful in getting us voted in and getting us this power, but now we're leaving you behind. We're racing off to the most smallest, intersectional, tiniest little group on the planet. And if, and if you don't give them all the power and the rights and everything else, you're a bad person. And, and, and if you're a woman, mm, sorry. If you're a minority, sorry. See you. Like leaving you behind. Your view is, is that the core of this, this right then is about what? So um, I want to recognize that your line of questioning um, is transphobic, <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence by not recognizing that. Wow, you're saying that I'm... Uh, sorry, I need to keep jumping in here because she's literally crazy talking. She's literally crazy talking. So by him simply asking, are you saying that it's not just women that can have uh, to get pregnant? Like, I'm confused what you mean. That's, that is harmful on his end. That, that's what she's saying. It's phobic and phobe and isms and all this other stuff. I'm opening up people to violence by asking whether or not women are the folks who can have pregnancies. So I'm one, I want to note that one out of five transgender uh, persons have attempted suicide. So I think it's important because of my us. line of questioning. Because so we can't talk about it. Because denying that trans people exist and pretending not to know that they exist. I'm is denying dangerous. that trans people exist by asking Are you? you if you're talking Are you? about women Are you? having pregnancies. Do you believe that there, uh, men can get pregnant? No, I don't think women can get pregnant. <laughs> so you pregnant. are denying that trans people exist? Like and that leads to violence? Is this how you run your classroom? Are students allowed to question you? Absolutely. Or are they also treated like this? Where no, you, no, no, they're, they're told that to they're at, opening up people to oh, violence. We have a good time questioning. in my class. You should join. Oh, I bet. You might learn a lot. Wow. I you can hear the, condes the, the condescending tone from this witch. I, I would learn a lot. I've learned you, a lot I just know. in this exchange. Absolutely. Extreme. This is what you get, man. This is congratulations. This is what society's voted for. It's what they've put in power. It's what's in our universities. You know, back in, back in my day, we used to call somebody that liked, um, uh, uh, like men that liked women, that was straight. There was straight, and there was gay. And now she's adopting the labels, and they're going to keep using them till everybody, I will never use any of those. None of them. Not using those words. You don't get to change my English language to adapt to your craziness. My, my, my language is, and, and uh, at this point, yeah, I'm going to call you crazy. I'm going to call you disconnected from reality. And, and, and if you want to keep bringing society down that path, if you want to keep going down that way, you're welcome to it. I'm just not going to follow, and I refuse to follow. 
I'm just going to consider you nuts. And, and, and here's the good news. I'll leave it on this. Uh, here's the good news. Society has had enough. I, I, I think the majority of, of kind of normies, regular people, have had enough. And how do I know this? There was a poll done. Let's see, this poll was done by YouGov. Um, the respondents were shown images of these flags, and they were, they were told about these flags. And they say, how Americans view flags in 2022. And this is from June 15th to the 17th. So just from, a, now I don't know where, but they surveyed a bunch of people. They said, do you have a positive or negative view of the blank flag? Now, some of these numbers are, are pretty disappointing, but, but some don't. But this shows you, again, what they're doing is they're pushing themselves into a corner. Uh, do you have a positive or negative view of the following flags? Purple is very positive. Deep red is very negative. Uh, green's neither positive nor negative, And gray is don't know. Of the American flag, uh, 60% are very positive and 17% are somewhat positive. 13% neither positive or negative. Now, if you ask me, if you're an American, you, sh- you should have a positive view of our flag in our country. If you don't, you have a problem. Um, but but all combined, it's uh, 60 plus 17, which is uh, 77, 13. So that's like 90% of people still view it as either, no, it's not positive or negative or somewhat positive or very positive. Only 5%, actually less than 5% are negative or very negative. Those are your, those are your weirdos, your wackos that think that our country is ruined because of my, my patriarchy. Uh, the Betsy Ross flag, um, much less liked um, because, again, they, they started, uh, these activists and Colin Kaepernick started saying that it was a, an ism flag, even though the, uh, President uh, Obama hung this behind him during his inauguration. So apparently uh, President Obama was part of the ism group, still has a positive. Uh, below that and tied with each other is the BLM flag. Um, well, you might say, well, wow, that's third place with the most positive. Not really, because it's viewed 22% very positive, 29% very negative. It's still a little bit more, a little bit more positive, I think. Well, let me see. Very positive and positive or somewhat positive is 37%. Negative or very negative is 39%. So still, and and of this 20% of neither positive or don't know, there may be some people in there that are kind of afraid to say anything because of, you know, it's it's basically on par with the Gadsden flag as far as likability, which is the don't tread on me flag. But as far as somewhat negative or very negative, the Gadsden flag is viewed much less negatively than the BLM. And here's what's interesting. The Trump flag is actually liked as much as the Black Lives Matter, very liked. It's, um, it's uh, somewhat positive, is a little bit less than that. But if you look here, the very negative is very red, is very large, 38. 38% say very, very negative. And, and what this tells you is there's a very strong polarization in this country. But as we go down this list, these are flags that are viewed positively. They, they've ranked this by positive. And so far, the most positively viewed flags in America right now is the American flag, the Betsy Ross flag, the BLM and Gadsden flag are tied, but Trump, the Trump flag is actually tied with the BLM flag as far as favorability for the very positive. Again, we could break it down more. Below that is the gay pride flag, the LGHD TV, the traditional one, the rainbow. That is not viewed nearly as well, uh, two, well, almost as well, two points lower than even Trump. But again, that very negative is quite high. <laughs> the Biden-Harris flag, only 13 view, uh, view it very positively. And again, I, I could include the, the somewhat positive, but I have to do math at that point. I'm too lazy right now. But below that, and it, but that's also viewed as very negatively. As a matter of fact, if you look, the Trump 2024 flag at 22 very liked, Biden-Harris 13 very liked. At very disliked, Trump was 38, Biden-Harris 35. So, so just a year and a half into this administration, uh, even though the, the news is very heavily propping up uh, Biden and Harris, 
uh, their flag is not appreciated very much. Below that is the redesigned LDHD TV, LGHD TV with only 13% very positive and 24% very negative. And then the, the T, the trans uh, flag, 13, positive, 23, negative, which is uh, ironically almost tied as far as being viewed positively with the Confederate flag. And really, there's, the, there's about a 10-point difference in the very negative. But if you, if you can see this, I mean, you can if you're watching and not listening to the podcast, you can see that the, the, the pride flags are almost, almost viewed the same as the Confederate flag when it comes to favorability or people just saying, I don't know, or somewhat. Only the very, very strong dislike for it is higher. And then the last one, the come and take it flag, which I'm sure that's a picture of a cannon. I'm sure a lot of that, most of that, it's not that it's least favored. It's just a lot of people don't know or don't have an opinion on it. This is telling you that the, that the swing back to normalcy, the swing back to normalcy is coming. And what's important is if, you know, we're, we really are fighting back against this globalism and this feminism and this indoctrination of everything and ESG, which is now being pushed very strongly. And I, I did a video on that last year. I told you it was coming. Here it is. You're seeing countries that are collapsing, trying to get these high ESG scores. Um, Sri, Lanka, Sri Lanka was one of them. And yes, I understand who they aligned with, whether it was India versus the, the CCP and all that stuff. I, I get that. But Ghana is another one. Um, uh, now Germany is talking about rationing uh, power and, and gas and other things, and there may be shortages. Uh, France, same thing. These are countries that have the highest ESG scores, um, especially with uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Dutch trying to close down their farms. And what's interesting, no one ever talks about this, is that they're trying to push responsible green companies like BlackRock and Vanguard to purchase the land and control the farms. I'm telling you, if that happens, that's over. It's game over at that point. But, if, but, but the way through all of this is to be able to stick up for your guns, to be able to speak your mind, to be able to um, stand up for what you feel is right, no matter what that is. And the only way you can do that is by understanding that words can't hurt you. And I did a, just for curiosity, I did a Microsoft Bing search for words can't hurt you. And in this uh, big tab at the top of it, it says this is a controversial statement. When I was a child, I was told words can't hurt me. I was told not to worry about that stuff. You know, these are people that you don't care about and you don't know who they are. And who cares if they like you or don't like you? Sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can't hurt you. But now they say eh, it's a controversial statement. Being criticized for your intelligence, your race, or even where you live can hurt you physically or emotionally. Now you can be hurt physically by someone insulting you, they say. And, and it's a story. It's some woman writing a butthurt story about how people's words hurt her. But I'll tell you right now, words cannot hurt you. And, when you th and, and we're in a society now where they're trying to protect people's feelings from words. And, and this is what I referenced in the last couple of videos I've done. Uh, that I wanted to talk about is imagine that you've got a waste basket, a trash can, okay? And you don't want, and that's your head, right? That's your head. And you want, don't want any trash going into that can. You don't want any trash going into the can. So what you do is, as a, a strong individual is you protect that can. You stand right over that trash can and any trash that's thrown your way, balls of paper and other stuff, you just swat it away. You just knock it away. It's very easy. You stand in one spot and you just swat the trash away. You swat the bad thoughts away. You swat the negativity away. You swat the indoctrination away. You just go, nope, not, nope, not hearing it. It takes very little energy. You just protect yourself and understand your own view of the world and, and you protect it and you stay strong. What society's tried to do instead is to say, no, no, that person shouldn't have to protect their trash can. 
They shouldn't have to protect themselves. So we're going to run around and we're going to stop everybody from throwing the trash. Now, trust me, it's a lot easier to block the trash can from all the trash throwing and you just sit there and deflect everything and knock it away. That is really easy. It's low energy. It is low effort. The other way is the 1984 way. We must stop the the bad words. We must rewrite history. We must control what you hear so that your feelings are protected. And that's what they're doing today. So Lizzo uses the word spaz in a song and, and she has to edit it because one or two people complained about her using the word. And now the, what used to be, you know, what used to be, uh, LGB and then LGBT and then LGBTQA, QAAI plus, QAAI plus 2A, LMNOP, and that's why they're called the alphabet community now. It's because they're trying to add more and more in. And they're trying to say as they add those people in, we need to protect so straight might hurt somebody's feelings, but cis is okay. Cis will be bad someday. They'll change that too. You know, it's, it's why if you use the acronym too often in a video, the, the LGHD TV, if you like actually say that right too many times in the video, you'll get marked for a review because you might be saying something bad about that community. That's why people now call it the alphabet crew or the LGHD TV. You, you like you make up your own stuff because they're word policing. It's why I police my words here because the scrapers at YouTube, the automated computer system will come through and look for keywords. And a lot of times if you use keywords too many times, you have to then, because it'll mark it as unmonetized. So you'll still see ads, but we as creators won't get paid for it and it won't get recommended in new views. So then as we as creators, you have to say, okay, forget it, delete the video from YouTube. And then you, you open up your editor and you take out a couple of controversial words and maybe cut a little snippet of segment out and you upload it. And, and you're, you're in a catch 22. Because you either speak your mind truly completely or you make no money. And nobody wants to to work for free. You know, I I don't want to sit for hours and hours finding stories to talk about and then do an hour-long video and edit it and everything else. Doing four, five, six hours of, of video and not making a dime off it. Okay, so what I do is I put that content over on Locals because members over there, supporters over there, will support me monthly. And then I'll say, look, I, I okay, can speak my, my truth, but at least I can make a paycheck. But that, but that whole thing is how they're controlling the, the words that you hear and the stories that we talk about. And, and to, to remove a bad word or to remove a, a specific word to be able to get the message out just so you can make a, a paycheck, that's, that's what most creators are doing. Because then they can go, okay, I can make a paycheck, but also you get my message. And that's what they do. But, but there's more and more words you need to circumvent. And you need to dance around because they're so afraid that somebody watching their feelings might get hurt. Now in movies, you can't say certain things. And when you take away, when you take away certain words and you take away certain thoughts and you take away certain themes and you take away certain, th- you know, you end up getting the difference between uh, the like Deadpool, or he, that's a rated R movie. Um, it didn't have any spicy, but you know, it, a good movie. Like we used to joke around when, when I had HBO, or I didn't have HBO as a kid, but when I was visiting friends' houses and their parents actually bought HBO, we used to kid around because when a, when a, a a movie came on, and and I swear this is true, when a movie came on in the beginning, it would say. Uh, they'd have rated like, like N for, you know, spicy undressed people. See, I can't even say that word because of YouTube. Uh, undressed people or topless people or whatever. And uh, there would be like action scenes and blood and violence and all this other stuff. And the more of those you saw, you're like, oh, this is going to be a good movie. As a, you know, 14, 15, 16 year old uh, young man, those are going to be the good ones. And if it came up with rated G approved for everybody, you're like, nope, I'm out. Because people don't want that watered down, you know, tame, calm. They like, they like this, the, that spice in society. But they're trying to get rid of spice. They're trying to get rid of words. They're trying to shut everybody down to protect everybody's feelings. And they can't do it all because there's always going to be new words. There's always going to be new things that upset people. 
that hurt your feelings. It's always going to be there, and there's nothing you can do about it. And they change the words so that what you, what used to be okay now hurts your feelings, and you need to, to switch your words again and again, and, and more words get added to this dog pile. The best way to save it is just protect your thoughts. Protect your own garbage can. <laughs> protect your own head and what gets into it. It's easy. It's effortless. It's low energy. And then anybody can say what they want. Anybody can say anything about anything. And you just go, okay, whatever. Like, that doesn't affect me. The words cannot hurt you unless you let them. And they cannot give you physical pain. They can give you emotional pain. I, and I suppose if you took that word really hard enough and it gave you such emotional trauma that you ended up having a heart attack, well, you better toughen up, buttercup. Because the heart, when the hard times show up, it's not going to be about your fifis and, and how you feel and see and view the world. That's when you care about that stuff when you're out of problems. You ask pe people in Sri Lanka right now, hey, how, how do you feel about someone using a certain word? Or they're like, bitch, I'm starving. We're out of food and clean water, and we have no electricity, and we have no propane to cook our food. We are dying. F you in your freaking words. You'll know when we get there. Those are the tough times. Well, now, we may not get there here in the Western societies and everything, but it, it'll be miraculous how many of these problems aren't problems anymore when people are literally worried about feeding themselves, finding a warm, dry place to sleep at night. You don't care about that stuff. So, uh, all right, guys, I'll uh, I'll try to come up with some other topics. I, I'm I I know this is a lot in one video, but I just think there's so much out there right now that that keeps dragging me into these culture wars, and I think it's because feminism and these crazies, it is it is a culture war now, and and that's where we are. And look, if we're gonna talk about it, and you don't like me being anti left, anti woke, tough, because I I didn't take us here. These, these crazies took society there, and this is where we are. And if, if we're going to fight back, we got to talk about it. And it is what it is. Uh, guys, if you're here on YouTube, um, thank you for uh, uh, viewing content. Make sure to jump over to Locals to support me. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And if you're on Locals and you're a supporter, thank you very much. And if you're just a member, please become a supporter today. It helps me continue paying my bills when I get into the more controversial stuff. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.